I, around seven years old, I was like, what? You know, this was like a, a light bulb moment where I realized that I don't believe in this faith. I do not believe Jesus is God. Me, Muslim? I'm, never, I'm not going to be a Muslim. What are you talking about? Islam is a terrorist religion. These people are evil. America and other countries were going into Iraq and Afghanistan. I remember watching it on the news. We will bring freedom to others. Thinking, yeah, let's go and get these Muslims. And yeah, let's go and get these Muslims. You know, I was kind of like cheering them on because I'd never been properly introduced to Islam. Assalamu alaikum, Brother John. Thanks for coming. We will be having an interview with you, inshallah. To start off with, who is John Fontaine and can you tell us briefly about your life? Yes, yeah, so my name is John Fontaine. I'm a convert to Islam. I converted in 2008. And before Islam, I was a, I was a jazz singer. I was uh, also studying diamonds and uh, working in Africa. So I'm from Manchester, the famous city. You know, a, a mixed upbringing. I uh, went to school, college, and then I started to get into business and uh, singing as well. How was your life in regards to faith? What were you believing in? I was raised and born and raised as a Christian. So from a very young age, I used to go to church. I went to different types of churches. I also went to evangelical churches as well which is a very different religion to Protestant Church of England religion. I was also into music so I started to play the church organ, I played the ukulele, banjo, I played the trumpet so I was very musical from a very young age. So in my teenage years I got into singing so from the age of 14 I was singing and then when I became around 16, 17 I started to sing professionally as a job singing in jazz clubs and cruise ships and football in Manchester United's ground and different places. It's fun, you know, in Jahiliya, uh, my time before Islam, I felt like I'd got to the peak of where I could be in the music industry. You know, I wasn't going to be the number one singer in the world. I didn't have the, you know, the dark, handsome looks of a jazz singer. And when I was singing in some of these clubs, I just thought, well, I've done it. It, it was like I'd reached my goal and it was it, it was an empty feeling you know when you've made it you know you, you've tried to uh, work so hard to to succeed in a particular field and then all of a sudden you're at the top of, of where you can be and then what am I going to do this for the rest of my life it's not fulfilling so this is why I started to look into business as well. I started to study diamonds, I, and that, that's when my journey took me to Africa and, and on to different things. What was the thing that made you question your belief? Was it an event? Was it a thought? And when was it? That's an interesting question. From a young age, the age of about seven years old, I remember being in Sunday school in church. We had to write a song about God, and my song was called Jesus and God. And that was the chorus. It was like a rap. I had some verses. I still remember the verses. I'm not going to sing it now. And I remember the pastor, one of the youth workers, he, he took the piece of paper and, and changed the words. So originally my song was Jesus and God. And the pastor changed it to Jesus is God. And I, I, around seven years old, I was like, what? You know, this is like, a, I believe Jesus is God. You know, my concept of Jesus was that he's a man, he's a human being, he's a prophet of God, and there's no way I was going to accept that uh, Jesus is God. So this was the kind of the first instance where I started to question, well, what is the right religion? Because I did believe in God, and my concept of God was what my concept of God is today. We can't imagine God. You know, he's one. He's something beyond our comprehension. But there was no way I was going to accept that Jesus is God. So this was shocking for me. From a young age, I knew, you know, what's going on. You know, all my, my family, my friends, my community, they're all following this religion. And uh, it doesn't make sense. It was very eye-opening. When did you first hear about Islam? Well, I would say the first time I started to hear about Islam and think about it as a religion was 9-11. I remember I, I was in school, I was in a woodwork class. Now I was, I was making my GCSE product of a, a rocking horse and there was a lot of commotion. We had the, we did, the teacher got the 9-11 incident on the laptop and we were shocked, you know, that, that, that somebody had uh, flew a plane into the World Trade Centers. And all I heard was the Muslims, it's Muslims, it's Muslims. And uh, from then I, I went home and I was watching the news and I remember when 
America and other countries were going into Iraq and Afghanistan. I remember watching it on the news, thinking, yeah, let's go and get these Muslims. You know, I was kind of like cheering them on, not knowing anything about Islam. All I thought I knew was that Islam is a terrorist religion, these people are evil, and that was kind of my first introduction. For what reason did you feel the attraction towards Islam? Initially, uh, I was looking into Islam online. I was watching YouTube uh, when YouTube first came out, coming across some different videos. I also, at the age of 18, I traveled to Senegal in West Africa. And for those who don't know, Senegal is a Muslim country. When I was in Senegal, I was actually quite scared of Muslims initially because of 9-11, because I had many misconceptions about Muslims. So actually going to Senegal opened my mind. I realized, number one, that there's African Muslims. I'd never seen African Muslims. So I was really uh, interested in understanding how did Islam come here, you know. And when I went to Senegal, this was the first time I actually heard the Adhan. It was fascinating. You know, I was really happy to hear the call to prayer. I wanted to understand it. I wanted to understand the meaning. And I met some Muslims. I came across a brother who, at the time, he was working in the hotel. And he invited me to his house, to stay in his house. So I ended up living with him for some time. I went to a Muslim wedding, I went to a Muslim funeral, and um, I, I witnessed him and his mother and his, and his family praying. Uh, we ate together, sitting on the floor, and all these things were um, amazing to me. At that time, did becoming a Muslim cross your mind? But I wasn't convinced on Islam. So even though I liked the culture, I, I liked my experience, this wasn't enough to make me a Muslim. This just sparked my interest even more to kind of... It was kind of weird because I started to, to attack Islam by using Christianity. Even though I knew Christianity wasn't true, culturally I was still Christian. So I started to, uh, you know, try to find problems of Islam, you know, spark discussion with some of the Muslims. Uh, but the more I researched, the more I questioned Islam, the more I was impressed about the teachings and, and the message of the Qur'an. And uh, I guess I was willing to accept Islam. When I say willing to accept Islam, I mean I was willing to give Islam a chance because the Africans were had a part to teach me about Islam. In Senegal, did you have any memory that you cannot forget? So I was 18 years old. This is five years before I converted. And um, while I was staying in the brother's house, who was a Muslim, uh, his grandmother passed away. And she was 105 years old. And he was crying. He was sat on the bed crying. So I sat next to him. I put my arm around him. And I said, you know, she'll go to a better place. And he said, I'm not crying because she's passed away. He said, she's a Muslim. He said, she goes to Jannah, inshallah. He said, I'm crying because she's a very old woman and I wanted her to meet you so that she can make dua that you will become a Muslim. And that touched me. I thought, me, Muslim? I'm, never, I'm not going to be a Muslim. What are you talking about? You know, I didn't say that because, <laughs> he's, you know, he's still upset that his grandmother passed away. But this had an effect on me. I was like, why is this so important for this man? Why is he crying? He's just lost his grandmother. He's not crying because she's passed away. He's crying because he wants me to be a Muslim. And that was something that made me think, wow, this guy actually believes. He really believes in this religion. When and how did you accept Islam? When and how did you accept Islam? I eventually accepted Islam when I was 23 years old. I was doing some research, but again, at the time, I was not willing to give up singing i was not willing to give up certain things and and i guess and i didn't know how to become a muslim in fact i didn't know i could be a muslim i thought islam was something you're born with you know something you inherit from your parents i'd never known they were converts to islam it wasn't until when i was researching i came across videos with people like abdurahim green and yusuf estes and uh, other people converts when i realized wow there's actually a lot of english and american people who are accepting islam and i can be a muslim so that that was something that led me to think okay now this is something i should look into so who invited you then i was in egypt at the time and i went to a mosque and i asked my friend to teach me how to pray and he refused he said, no. He said, you're not a Muslim. I said, well, I believe, you know, I, I fasted Ramadan, I tried to pray. I, he said, okay, you have to say the Shahada. I asked him, what is the Shahada? So he told me the Shahada and I, and I became a Muslim. I felt like a big weight was taken off my shoulders. I felt clean. And alhamdulillah, I, I, I already believed. 
you know, it, it wasn't like the belief just came at that point. I've always believed in Allah. And then I went back to the UK. I tried to find a mosque and I was still scared to go to the mosque. I felt that the Muslims were terrorists. I still had negative feelings about Muslims. So I went to a, a, a place, I thought it was a school, but it wasn't a school, it was a mosque. And subhanAllah, behind the reception, there was a, an Englishman. I was shocked, you know, as a white man, walking into a mosque, I was expecting to see Pakistanis and Arabs, and there's a white man. <laughs> and uh, he helped me. Uh, taught me the Fatiha, taught me the, the small surahs and taught me how to pray. Every day I would go there, he would teach me how to pray, he would listen to me re read the Quran and there were some other brothers in the mosque, I would sit there having coffee and they, they would be teaching me and, and that's how I started my journey. And how did your family and your close circle react to your conversion to Islam? I think in the beginning people just thought it was a phase that it's not going to last long, he will grow out of it. And now, 13 years on, I'm still a Muslim. Um, of course, many of them had concerns that Islam was uh, dangerous and Muslims are terrorists. And I totally understand people having them concerns, you know, because all they know is what's in the media. And this is the this is the the problem of the Muslims because the Muslims are not educating the non-Muslims about the correct Islam, you know. So if the non-Muslims know about Islam, they won't have these these stereotypes and these uh, these concerns. So yeah, it was difficult in the beginning. Uh, lots of family and friends were confused and and worried. But alhamdulillah, now everything is okay. What was the major challenge you faced after becoming a Muslim? The hardest thing for me was praying Salah. If you're not in the habit, the Salah is difficult because we're not used to spending that time five times a day to, to pray the Salah. But one way I dealt with this is I promised myself that I will never sleep at night unless I've prayed my five daily prayers. So imagine you're praying all five daily prayers at night before you sleep. This is not allowed, by the way. This is this is not permissible. But of course, what impressed you the most about our Prophet wasallam? This is an amazing question. When we look at the reality of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Fourteen hundred years ago, he came. One man in the desert received revelation from Allah, as well as the highest status a human being can be given, which is a prophet, and the impact that he had on the world, even to this day, and his followers who follow his sunnah, follow his way, or we try to follow his way. The love that we have, look, we're here today. We, we, we're spending our wealth and our time on the deen. We truly have Iman in this. And, and, and if you just imagine all the followers of Islam, not just the ones that are alive today, but for the past 1400 years, preserving the sunnah, preserving the statements and the actions of this man and obeying the, the, the messenger of Allah, obeying Allah, you know, and the, the, the impact that he's had on this world, that a third of the world currently follow the Prophet, peace be upon him, or, you know, they're Muslims. You know, this is just the introduction. Seriously, when people reflect on this man and, and what he did, and more importantly, the message that he was given, the solutions that the Quran has for humanity. You, you, you bring the Sharia, the, the, the law of, and the guidance from Allah, and you compare it to any other religion or any other, any other philosophy, any other way of life. Islam beats the, any other religion or way of life in its wisdom. And it's also simple to understand. What was your purpose in your life before Islam and what is it after Islam? Purpose and the goal is to see Allah. You know, to, to be in, in paradise, be in Fadaus and have the opportunity to actually see our Creator. You know, that is the ultimate. And of course, after that, see the Prophets. You know, sitting with the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, sitting with Isa salam, and, uh, and uh, all the Prophets, having conversations with them. You know, this, this is the purpose. Before Islam, you don't, I don't, I don't think people really think about purpose of life. I don't think they make their own purpose. I didn't. Just, you're just living day to day. What projects are you doing right now? For myself, I'm doing some work in Africa, planning on building schools in Africa. I'm also writing a book about the Islamic perspective of revelation and the previous scriptures. I'm also writing a book about atheism, tackling some of the issues on, on atheism. I also have a YouTube channel. I have a podcast called Young Smirks, so go and subscribe. Apart from that, just reading, studying, doing da'wah and uh, trying to share the message of Islam. If you had a chance to speak to all the non-Muslims in the world, what would you like to say to them? 
Um, I would just encourage them to look into Islam sincerely, you know, learn Islam from Muslims who have studied the religion. Take some time out, read some books on Islam, understand what this religion has been so dominant for the past 1400 years believes. Uh, no doubt Islam is very influential on the world. You know, we're talking a third of the world's population are Muslim. So this is something just out of respect for your neighbor, out of respect for your fellow human beings. You should learn about what they believe. Take some time and study and learn about the concepts in Islam and uh, just be sincere to yourself. I would encourage all the non-Muslims to worship Allah, the Creator alone. That God that you make dua to when you're in need, that God you you, you pray to, I should say, when you're on the, pr the plane shaking, you got turbulence and you're calling out to the Creator. That's the God that Muslims believe in. That's the God that Muslims pray to. So ask that God to guide you. Put your head on the floor in your bedroom when you're alone. Just put your head on the floor and ask the Creator to guide you. What would you like to say as your final comments? Well, one thing I would say is just, I would actually advise the Muslims uh, who are watching this, um, maybe you're not praying. Maybe your salah is not on time. Maybe you're weak in Iman. Maybe you don't have much knowledge about Islam. Try to learn more about Islam and focus on your salah. Make sure that your five daily prayers are on time. As a Muslim, if you have your five daily prayers on time, prayed correctly, you will see that your life will fall into place. When your connection is right with your Creator, the dunya is easy. This life is easy. Allah is a razak He's the one who provides. He's the one who protects. He is the all wise. When you have Iman in these things, when, you, when a calamity comes, you know that the all wise, Al Hakim, is behind that. And SubhanAllah, Iman comes through knowledge. It's not just through saying, I love the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Loving the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the proof of that is that you obey him and follow him. Take it step by step. Start with your salah and things will fall into place. And I encourage everyone, whether you're Muslim, whether you're non-Muslim, to take Islam seriously. Reflect on the Quran, read the Quran, give Islam a chance, read about what Islam teaches. The pure, strict monotheism of worshipping only God alone. We don't pray to Muhammad, we don't pray to anything, we don't pray to saints, we don't pray to anyone, we pray directly to God alone.